So we all know the importance of having a good trade plan, but do you have your trade plan set out correctly? There really are different ways you can have them set out. So whilst I set my camera up, I want to ask you, do you feel like you actually use your trade plan on a day-to-day -day basis? Or do you just have a trade plan written out for the sake of having it written out? Or do you even have a trade plan written out? That's the question that I want to ask you before we get into this video. Funding meant for traders, meant funding. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a difference between having a trade plan and having a trade plan clearly set out on a program where you can easily resort to it. If for a second we think of this from a business perspective, every single business will have a clear business plan where they'll buy stock, where they'll sell stock, how they'll pay their staff, etc, etc. And the reason why it's important to have something like that in trading is because in a business, you'll have multiple people working for that business. So there's automatically that bit of accountability, right? However, in trading, it's normally just you. How are you going to go about keeping yourself accountable? The answer to that question that I usually hear is by having a trade plan, but there's no point having a lengthy trade plan or a trade plan written in a format that you don't work best with. You need to have a trade plan that works for you that you can resort to every single time you take a trade and be able to follow step by step. This video is for basically everyone. If you have not created a trade plan, I'm gonna show you how you can do that. And if you already feel like you have a trade plan that you're happy with, stick with me in this video. By the end of this video, I really do have a great feeling that you'll be able to go into your next trading session prepared with a really good plan that you can follow step by step rather than having it all written on just one document or or even worse, just storing it in your brain. That's the worst thing that you could do as a trader. So let me take you some of the things that have really worked for me and hopefully they can work for you guys as well. Picked up my morning coffee, let's head back. Before we can go into it too much, we need to make sure that our current trade plan is written up in some type of format. And what I mean by this is that we should not be going in blind creating some type of a flowchart. When we're trading live, we want to easily be able to look at the flowchart and then remember everything else. The flowchart is good to use as prompts. If you already have a trade plan written out that looks something like this, where you have clear rules for what you'll get involved in, how you'll enter, how you'll manage, how you'll exit, and then what you'll do after the trade, then you go to fast forward until this timestamp now on your screen. If you've not got one of these, or your current trade plan looks a bit like this, where it's sort of all over the place with no actual step-by-step -step method behind it. So to create something that I had, I want you to get a pen and paper and start by putting in these bits of information. It doesn't have to be overly in depth, nor should it be just one or two words. It should be enough so you understand what you're reading. Once you've done that exercise, you should now have something that is basically a step-by-step -step written trade plan. It's good to also have something like this as well as a flowchart. A flowchart is great to make sure your processes are flowing, hence the name. But if you ever needed more information about a certain element of the flowchart, a written trade plan is good to refer to. Remember this top tip as well, a written trade plan does not need to be pages and pages and pages of paragraphs. It can be very simple and straightforward where you're looking at just what markets you want to enter, what you want to see on the higher time frame, what signals will you look for for you to know it's going to be time to enter, which could be through the use of validation. What entry criteria do you use? What time frame do you enter on? The management side of things. So once you place an order or enter a trade, how are you going to actually manage that trade? Exit strategy for the trade should also be included in the management section. So if you manually close, say five or 10 minutes before the news, include that in the management section. And then finally, what you're going to do with that data after you've took the trade, you need to journal it somewhere. So if you've not got something like this already, pause the video here and then come back to the video. Great. So now we have something that we can follow, which is a step by step 
written trade plan. You could already use this as is if this is what works for you. There's no right or wrong, but the way that I'm going to show you, I feel like is a bit better and you might be able to take some ideas out of it as well. So the flowchart service I use is called Figma. You can use whatever you want as long as it has the capabilities of creating a flowchart. That's all you need. Figma has a free plan and this video is not sponsored or affiliated with Figma whatsoever. It's just what I found to work best for me. Great. So once you've got your account, I'm going to head over to the top right and we're going to click on create a new Fig Jam board, which will give you a page a bit like this. If it's the first time you're using this, it might show you a demonstration, but for the sake of this video, if you want to follow along with exactly what I'm doing, and as long as you have a blank clean slate like this, then we are all good and we're on the same page. First of all, I'm going to go quickly through the controls just so you guys can be sped up as to how to use this program. All the tools belong on the bottom. These consist of things like a marker pen. They also include some more options here, for example, a highlighter and you can change the colors and change the sizes, etc. We have a sticky note section, so you can add sticky notes on whatever color you want. You can do quite a lot with this program, which is really, really cool. The main things that we're gonna be using today is these here, which are the flowchart elements. We're gonna be using the sections, select tool, and the hand tool. Some very useful keyboard shortcuts. You can press and hold down the space bar at any time to quickly move around your canvas like this. To make it easier to show you, I'm just going to draw a box. If you press shift and use the scroll wheel on your mouse, you can scroll from side to side. If you don't press shift, you can scroll up and down. If you hold down the command key or the control key, you can zoom in and out again with a scroll wheel. And like I said, you can use the space bar to move around at any time as well. So let's get into it. Where do we start? I'm going to head down here to the bottom and I'm going to click this section down here and I'm going to stay on the basic, even though they do have other options here. The basic one is all that I use. And I'm going to start off with a circle because for me, a circle represents the start or end point of a flow. The other tools that we'll be using are going to be the diamond, which represents a decision node, which can be something like has the higher time frame lined up. You can use something like a diamond for that. And the last one that I also like to use is going to be the square. If you want as well, you can also use a rounded rectangle. I tend to go for the rounded rectangle, but for the sake of easeability, I'm going to just use a square, the circle and the diamond. The square is used more so as an instruction. So it's not asking you to make a choice, it's telling you what to do next. For example, head over to a lower time frame. It's also good practice to color coordinate. You can use whatever colors you like. You can copy the colors that I'm going to use in mine, or you're more than welcome to use your own. Use whatever colors are appealing to you to the eye. I I personally like to use these colours at the bottom, they're more of a pastel type of colour rather than these more intense type of colours. So I'm going to use a light grey circle as the starting point and I'm just going to click anywhere. It doesn't matter where we click because we basically have an infinite canvas. So I've clicked there, I'm now just going to zoom in so we can all see a bit better and I'm just going to name this Start. Some of the things I like to do here, I like to add a bit of a border onto it. So if I head over to the line style and press the first option, it adds a border around it. And for these starting points, I also like to make the text bold, just so it's a bit easier to see. So now we're going to create our first area. In line with the trading plan that I showed you before, the first thing that I like to do is use the MentFX screener to identify some of the markets that I want to be trading on that day. So that's exactly what I'm going to put here. I'm going to click the circle first to load up these options on the side, and I'm going to click and drag out so it basically creates a bit of a line for me. And remember, the second bit of what I wanted to do here was going to be a instruction. So an instruction for me will be defined by using a square. So we'll hit the square. And on this, I'm just gonna type open screener. I'll just click out of it, press the space bar, move it along so I can see my canvas a bit clearer. And for these instructions, I'm gonna change the color a bit. So I'm going to use something like a, personally, I'm gonna use a bit of an orange. You can also press it, you can resize it, you can do whatever you want with it. You can move it around wherever you want as well. That's all completely up to you. But I'm gonna keep this as simple as possible and let you guys do all the customizing for your own personal plans. And I'm now gonna add a decision, which is going to be used by a diamond. So I'm gonna click this bit again, and I'm gonna drag along until where I want it. And I'm going to find the diamond, which is here. And I'm just gonna type in here, 
any forex symbols in good context. You'll notice sometimes something like this can happen where part of it will go light gray and the rest of it will stay black. That's because there's too much text in this. So it's a good way to either realize that you're adding too much information in, or it's actually a good thing to maybe even resize it a bit or change the font size or change the size of the diamond. But in these cases, when it does something like this for me, in my head, I know that I've added a bit too much on there. So I'm just gonna change this to FX in good context. And I'm gonna change the color here. I'm gonna use a, let's use a light blue like this. So I click out and I'm just gonna zoom out a tiny bit as well. We know where we're starting. We know we have to open the screener. And now we're looking at if Forex is in a good context or not. Now there's gonna be two parts in the next bit. The answer to this question could either be a yes or a no. So I'm gonna add two arrows going off this and you'll see how I'm gonna do this now. I'm gonna click the diamond and I'm going to take this arrow and drag it up to somewhere around here and I'm going to use a instruction node and then before I enter the text I'm going to do the same here so going to basically make it as symmetrical as possible something like that will do and I'm going to press the square again. What I personally like to do in these cases is the top one I'll have as the yes and the bottom one I'll have as the no. The yes I want it in a green colour and the no I want it in more of a red colour. And to add to this, on these arrows, you can also add some text. So if you click an arrow, press the text key, I can put yes. And for this here, I can put no. So that now means that we start, we open the screener, is FX in good context? Yes. Then what do we do? Or if it's no, then what happens? So for the no, I'm just going to type here, nothing to do. Come back the next trading day. And for the yes, I'm going to type in open the charts on trading view for the symbols in good context. And let's just clean it up a bit so it looks a bit nicer. Something else which I like to do too is after each one of these, I like to color coordinate the next arrow after it. So if I press this arrow here, I want to color coordinate it to this box here, which is gonna be this orange color, I believe it was. Yeah, cool, that orange color. And you can also change anything else as well. You can make it a bit thicker, you can make it dotted, or you can do whatever you want with it. So have a play around and see what you would like. And I'll do the same here as well. So this I will change to the blue color. This I will change to the blue color as well. On these arrows you can also add text backgrounds as well so if you click the color you can add a text background just so it makes it stand out a bit more. Now one thing that you might find annoying if you wanted to move the whole thing in one go you'd have to basically select everything by clicking and dragging or doing something like Control or command a but if you want an easier way where you don't have to do all that every single time you can create a section and wrap around everything into a section something basically like this and that means that now you can move around the section and it will move the whole creation around for you. And it adds a nice background to it as well. And you can change that background to whatever you want. So I won't carry on with this video because the rest of it should be pretty self-explanatory. All you have to do now is continue creating the same nodes and follow the same theme that you've already started off with to make it look really uniform and really nice. And over time, you should eventually have something that looks even as clean as this, where you have a start point, identify the symbol on the screener, or use tools that are available to yourself, or go through the charts, etc. And you'll have have something where you will be able to quickly refer back to it each time you're looking to trade because it should be very simple it shouldn't be too much in terms of the text like if you noticed on here I've not included sentences and paragraphs anywhere I've just included quick prompts quick yes or no's to guide me as to where the next stage is and if anything ends at a no but doesn't end the whole process you just have to go back a step make sure you add an arrow that goes back to where you want to go back to and this will make it as easy as possible for you to follow in the live markets so again, a very short and sweet video in terms of how you can create your flowchart. I would really love to see some of your flowcharts. So if you are in the MentorFX community, drop it into one of the channels. Or if you're not in the mentorship community, please do check it out. We also have a free YouTube channel where you can see a lot of the concepts that we use that are available to you for free right now. I'd really love to hear about it and see what your experience was like creating a flowchart. Use it in the live markets, come back after a few days and tell me if 
if it's actually been useful. Other than that, I hope this video has come in handy for you. If you have enjoyed it, please drop me a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you know when I post next. If you want to take your trading to the next level, head over to mentfunding.com and have a look at some of the trading valuations that we offer. I will catch you all in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.